Awesome. So we're continuing everyone with the um, platform track here um, at API Days um, in the final afternoon session. Um, and we're going to move on to a super interesting um, discussion we're having at the moment, which is the battle of the platform. There seems to be API platforms all over the all over the shop. And we've, we're privileged to have with us today um, David Freeman, who's a director and one of the founders of Sonrai Consulting. So um, he and I have, have some um, common history in having worked at Telstra, who started a huge um, API journey um, around 2015 that he was a part of. So welcome, David, and we're keen to, to learn from your, your experience and, um, and, and certainly where the API battle is, is heading. Yeah, thanks, Alex. Thank you for the introduction. And uh, good afternoon, everyone. I hope uh, everyone's had a good chance to get along to a few presentations today and uh, got a few insights as well. And I think one of the other important things with API days too is to meet and greet people. Obviously we can't do that face to face, but hopefully you've had the chance to uh, share some contact details and make some new contacts. And uh, like Alex introduced as well, it's good to come across some old familiar faces as well from my Telstra days. Uh, speaking about API wars, I'm gonna be talking about uh, battle of the platforms uh, I know in my Telstra days in, in setting up one of Telstra's strategic API platforms, uh, there was, I think, six API platforms at the time when we were first implementing that back in 2015. And yeah, one of them was the uh, the TIBCO uh, Layer 7 platform. So it's amazing that, uh, you know, even back then, there's, there was quite a proliferation of uh, API platforms. So today I am going to be talking about the API wars, and in this case, the battle of the API platform. So if you're looking to make a decision on API platforms or looking to get the inside edge on which API platform might be best suitable for your business, this is definitely the right talk to come along to. If you're not interested in API platforms at all, you're not interested in getting one or making a decision around one, perhaps you might just wanna sit back, relax, listen, and uh, maybe eventually fall asleep to the sound of my voice. But this is about uh, API platform choices. So hopefully I can give you some insight on that today. So a little bit about me. Uh, and again, thanks, Alex, for the introduction. Um, my name is David Freeman, director of Sonray Consulting. Uh, had uh, quite an extensive experience in Telstra as part of their API strategy and implementing their API platform and monetized APIs. If you did get along to Michelle Howie's talk from Telstra uh, before, uh, that was part of the program I was running before kicking off with this company. So now we're, we're taking all that knowledge and helping other companies on the journey as well. So I'm gonna cover two different topics. One is knowing your history and looking at the API platform war over the course of a few years. And then we're gonna look at some questions you might wanna ask yourself when uh, making a decision on uh, which API platform you should go for. So know your history. So one of the things they do say is if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. And certainly that can be the case uh, with API platforms as well as any technology as well. So knowing where API platforms have come from and where they're going to can also help you make a decision uh, today as well. So what we're gonna do is look at the API platforms and what the landscape was looking at, what that battlefield was looking like in 2015. And then we're going to go through history and bring us up to today. And so starting this conversation, we're gonna look at 2015 and the Gartner Magic Quadrant. We're gonna set that as the battlefield on the rolling planes of the API lifecycle management uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant. So it's 2015, we've got 15 platforms there today, all battling for superiority on the IPA, API platform battle space. And as I go through this, we're gonna look at uh, three different areas. One is, you know, which is the new platforms coming out? What are the new vendors uh, for that year that have entered the battlefield? Which of those vendors have remained up into the leadership quadrant or the conquerors, as I'm calling them, and which ones are the vanquished. So these might be ones that Gartner hasn't uh, bothered reviewing for that year because they're not a contender or they don't see them as a contender in the battle space. Uh, they might have ceased to exist or they might have been taken over 
by another company. So let's have a look at this. So we'll, we can see there in the top quadrant, you know, we've got Apogee, we've got CA Technologies, we've got Axway, MuleSoft, and Mashery. Now, if we fast forward to 2016, we can then have a look at what were the new platforms that came into this battlefield in 2016. And we can see there's a few there that came up, Sensedia, Oracle, Digital, ML, and Apiary. And then we can also see one of the first platforms as well to, I guess, hit the vanquished pile is Mashery. They were actually brought out in 2015 by Tibco. Uh, also in 2016 as well, we had Apogee getting bought out by or sold to Google. And as we go from 2015 to 2016, we get to see how the players move across the battlefield as well and see where they end up. And we can see there that the leadership position or the conquerors for that year has changed quite dramatically. Uh, so now we've got Apogee, CA Technologies, Axway, MuleSoft, but we've also added Tibco thanks to their purchase of Mashery. We've also got IBM up there and 3Scale, which is now a Red Hat platform as well. So let's have a look at uh, fast forwarding to 2018 and seeing what new vendors come up between that 2016 to 2018 year. And we can see there's quite a lot. So this uh, battlefield is really starting to get quite uh, crowded now. We've got AWS, Microsoft, SmartBear, Tyke, Kong, and Kony. And there's some big heavyweights there with uh, AWS and Microsoft. Uh, I mean, they're obviously some pretty big uh, cloud providers. And so they see that the API platform is definitely something that they need to fight for, a space that they need to uh, challenge as part of having a, a full suite of tools on their cloud platforms. And we can also see as well that uh, a few uh, providers drop out. So we have Akana and Apiary. So Apiary actually get taken over by Oracle, and that's why we see them on the Magic Quadrant. Uh, we also have Mashape as well. So they kind of half disappear. Uh, so they sold their marketplace onto Rapid API in 2015, I believe it was, and then they rebranded to Kong, and we can see uh, Kong has appeared on the um, Magic Quadrant as well. So we see how they move in 2018 as well. Quite a fair bit of movement there. And we can also see the Conquerors list also changes as well. So Axway, they drop out and we have Software AG, they actually drop into the picture. So let's have a look at 2019 and see what the changes were in 2019. And the new players in the market, we can see a Broadcom and Seaburger. So Broadcom, interesting one. They actually ended up purchasing uh, Layer 7 from one of the contenders on the battlefield. And then you've got Seaburger. They're a German-based integration company that ended up entering into the API space as well. Now, during this year as well, there's a few, uh, I guess, uh, armies that are left by the wayside that do get vanquished. And one of the big ones is CA Technologies. So it seems that almost every year that goes by, CA Technologies seems to uh, seems to uh, go get, get less and less of an important software-based company. And certainly in 2019, they sold off uh, Layer 7 uh, to Broadcom. And we also see Digital ML, Kony and Cloud Elements uh, drop off the list as well. Now, some of these platforms, they still offer API uh, management software, but they're just not seen by Gartner as a key contender in this battle space. And now let's have a look at the changes in 2019 and see how that battlefield changes with the movement of those platforms. So we can see there, uh, Tibco, uh, it moves out of the leadership position as well. So obviously they purchased Mashery, but they just can't keep up that leadership position. Uh, we see uh, Axway is back in there again. Uh, Software AG, IBM, MuleSoft, and Apogee are there as well. So let's have a look at 2020 and see what happens in 2020. So in 2020, uh, F5 with Nginx enters the battle space as well. 
And we also have a couple of uh, API providers that are vanquished. So Oracle, they exit the space. Uh, they are saying they're going to come back with an API platform, but they're not quite there yet. Uh, Seaburger, they weren't seen by Gartner as someone that's a contender in this space. And at the time with uh, SmartBear, as, as we've heard over the last couple of days, SmartBear, they offer some fantastic tools, fantastic capability. Uh, they just don't offer a full API management suite, but certainly they offer some great tools that are indispensable in running a great API program. And as we see with the movement of the uh, API platforms around the battlefield, we can see some significant movements there from Microsoft and Kong. So now, as we see at the end of 2020, we can see we've got Apogee, Axway, MuleSoft, IBM, Software AG, Microsoft and Kong all remaining in that leadership position. So I think now when you look at the past sort of five to six years, you can see that the, the more things change, uh, the more things kind of stay the same as well. And I guess the good news is for people that have purchased API platforms in the last five or six years, uh, their investments are, are still uh, going, They're still a going concern. Those platforms have largely uh, stayed up and running. Now, one thing to note for API platform providers out there, the vendors out there as well, you know, not to sit on their laurels. Certainly something I've seen over the last five or six years is that a lot of companies will switch API platforms once or even twice uh, over five years, they may switch their strategic direction from one platform to another. So even those providers up in that leadership quadrant, it's uh, something they, that will keep them on their toes and they'll keep on developing and improving their software over time. Uh, one of the other clear things as well, you know, we see you know, Apogee, MuleSoft, Software AG, Axway, IBM, and to some degree, Threescale, they've been consistent high performers year on year, ever since uh, 2015 up to now. Uh, but we also see some new heavyweights coming into the market. I mean, Microsoft and Kong, uh, these guys have made leaps and bounds just in the last couple of years as we see them getting more sophisticated features and more use cases in there. Uh, I mean, if we look at Microsoft, we can see they've been investing a lot into APIM, the API management platform. And also I think that that shows a little bit of ecosystem lock in there. So hearing back from some medium sized customers, uh, typically they might choose to do a strategic cloud investment with a single cloud. A lot of those end up being Microsoft because they have a strong offering around AD and Office 365. And so those businesses just start consuming other products from Microsoft as well. Hence, uh, it's um, it shooting up into that leadership quadrant. And Kong, well, they've got a wide range of do-it-yourself offerings, uh, great from small to large enterprises as well. So it's no surprise that those guys are hitting their straps too. So what about choosing your own API platform? What are those uh, key decision points uh, that you need to go through to decide on what API platform is right for the business. And certainly there's some things to consider when you're making an API platform choice. Uh, so let's have a look at those. The first one being, you know, extensibility. So do you need this solution as just take it out of the box or do you need a solution that you can provide your own customizations to? I mean, I always recommend to customers wherever possible, just go with an out of the box solution and less customization, it leaves you with less technical debt, but that's not always possible. And so that extensibility ends up being a key decision thing to consider. The other thing is on-prem or cloud. Does this need to run in the cloud as a managed service or do you need to run this on-premise? Maybe you have your own assets you need to sweat. Maybe it needs to be close to other on-premise infrastructure as well. Strategic alignment, uh, do the support, do the features support your API strategy or your business strategy? Uh, obviously some cloud, pro some API products may support it better than others. Scalability, well, all the API platform technologies do scale quite well, but I think what it comes down to is how easily is that able to scale for the traffic that you expect? Uh, take for example, you know, if you go with an API platform on cloud, well, really you're outsourcing the scalability to the cloud provider as a managed service and you don't have to worry about managing the underlying infrastructure. 
Whereas if you're installing that software on-prem, well, then you have to have the infrastructure that's able to meet the scale that you expect. Geographic location, that's important. Does this need to reside in Australia? Can it reside overseas? Uh, do you need to have a specific region that uh, you need to have this platform running in? Do you need to think about DR and have multi-region? Does this need to be sitting in within your own data center? So there's certainly some geographic questions there around the API platform of choice. Uh, pricing. So this is a really complex area, pricing. So API platform providers have lots and lots of different subscription, pay-as-you-go pricing models. And from a company perspective, you know, you need to look at, you know, do I have a lot of CapEx? How much OpEx do I need to have? Uh, do I need to start with a freemium type model? Uh, pay as you go, and then uh, look to switch over to a subscription model. And there, because there are so many different uh, pricing models out there, uh, it's certainly something that has to be looked at as well as part of your API platform choice. Monetization. So more and more companies are looking to monetize and sell their data, their API assets. And so which platform is good for monetizing uh, my data and my APIs? developer programs. So you're not going with an API platform just so it can sit there and collect dust. Uh, obviously, you want to be able to get your APIs created and then used, whether that's internal or with partners or externally. And so there's questions around uh, you know, the extensibility of your API, your developer program, and whether or not it's suitable for a broad set of users, a narrow set of users, internal or external use. And then there's support as well. So once you get your API platform into production, all of the platforms I've looked at have great enterprise support capability, but beyond that as well, you know, what kind of capabilities do they have around community support and documentation and articles that help you uh, troubleshoot problems and be able to get to uh, really good outcomes with your APIs? So overall, there's so many choices around API platforms, and there's a lot of things that need to be considered when choosing uh, the right API platform for your business. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take you through uh, some of those questions that you would ask uh, when making an API platform choice. And I'm going to overlay on top of that those API platform providers that were in that top quadrant, that leadership quadrant in 2020, and just to see how they stack up against some of those questions. Now, the questions I'll go through, they're not going to be exhaustive, uh, but it'll just give you a taste about where these platform providers sit. And hopefully, this gives you a little bit of insight into making the right API platform choice. So let's get into it. So first off, let's have a look at the geographic questions, and we'll put the uh, seven vendors that were part of that magic quadrant leadership in 2020 down the bottom, and we'll ask a few geographic questions here. So the first question is, maybe you're looking to put this on uh, you know, a local Australian cloud. You're looking for a managed service. So we're looking at a SaaS service now on a local Australian cloud. So which of these seven have a managed service on the local Australian cloud. And we can see there, there's actually quite a few to choose from. So you've got Google, uh, Apogee with GCP, you've got IBM Cloud as well in the Sydney region, Microsoft, Azure, and you also got Software AG with a software as a service solution as well. So if you are looking at a managed service on a local Australian cloud, you have got a few options there when you're looking at those top quadrant leaders. But what about DR capability as well? So maybe, okay, I want to go on cloud. I definitely want to manage service on cloud. What about geographic redundancy? Well, which clouds actually provide me the geographic redundancy with my API gateway as a managed service in Australia? And the choices are narrowed down there. So we've got both Google with Apogee and Microsoft, and they both run in the Melbourne and Sydney regions. So you narrow down your choices there if you're looking at a DR solution managing across two uh, regions. What about on-prem? So, hey, look, I want to run this on-premise. I want to run this as on a self-managed VPC on cloud. Well, in this case, you've actually got pretty much all the options there to choose from. 
uh, all the vendors do have a capability to run uh, on-premise or as a VPC. Some of these are going with more of a hybrid option rather than installing it completely self-isolated. But regardless, uh, they all have runtime capability uh, on-premise or in a self-managed VPC. So what about pricing? So I won't necessarily give you, you know, who the cheapest is or who the best bang for buck is. And that's because it can be a very difficult equation to go through and you really need to model that when you're choosing an API platform. But we're going to look at this through the lens of uh, CapEx, OpEx, pay-as-you-go type models. So what if you've only got CapEx? And I know this can be a bit of a challenge for traditional large businesses, you know, suffering that uh, ever-decreasing OpEx budgets and struggling to, to square that um, drive for cloud, which is OpEx, with the circle of financial accounting policies that might have in their traditional businesses. And so it can be very attractive to go to uh, a CapEx type model for everything, not only buying infrastructure, but buying software. The only challenge with that is, is uh, all software vendors these days are going with subscription models. So it's actually very difficult to find a pure CapEx only model. And so going down that subscription model path, you know, it's, it, again, it's very, very difficult to, to find a software vendor without going down that uh, CapEx path, without going through some kind of Lehman Brothers type accounting principles. But there is a couple out there from what I have been able to see. So if you are going a CapEx licensing model, certainly Software AG actually offer that out of the box and they publicize that. Um, the other one that I do know of is possibly with Apogee, just from the experience I have with them and their OPDK, I think you can get uh, three-year licensing with those guys. So what if you want to do it yourself? You've got the people, but you've got no budget. So you've got some great developers within your company, but you haven't got any budget to be able to spend on uh, developing your own API platform, whether that's a cloud budget or CapEx budget. Well, really, you're kind of stuck with a couple of choices, really one choice. Uh, so the Kong Gateway, that's fantastic, especially if you're starting fairly small and you've got the people capability. Uh, you can download that. It is open source and it's very extensible. Now, interesting, IBM with their API Connect, they also offer a free service as well, although it's only limited to 50,000 calls per month. So probably not enterprise grade. Lastly, perhaps you want to go a PAYG plan. Uh, this is great if you're starting small, especially when you're not sure what workloads uh, will look like in the future and you want to see how it goes before you commit to a subscription plan. And so what platforms have a PAYG plan that uh, you can purchase from? And so from the top quadrant, there are the four platforms there that you have available for you. So what about developer program questions? Um, Let's have a look at that from the monetization lens first. So which one of these platforms will really help you be able to monetize APIs? And this is a little bit of a complex question because if you do go out there and have a look at the vendors, you'll see on face value that they all, pretty much all of them say they'll be able to monetize APIs for you, but not all platforms are created equally. And from my experience and, and I guess diving into these platforms, uh, most of them really provide just the core, really just the foundational level of monetization. They don't have a monetization engine itself. So this is the same for Microsoft, MuleSoft, uh, Software AG, IBM, and Axway. Uh, they typically just have a basic foundation to monetize, but you have to build monetization on top of it. And that means metering, um, rate, um, rating it, um, applying currencies and plans, etc. So it's really only Apogee that has that inbuilt monetization engine. They've had that in there for six, seven years now. And so they have a capability in there to be able to do that end-to-end -end life cycle of monetization from setting up the packages, the rate plans, the currencies, being able to do transaction rate policies as well on the API for different charges for different calls and also having that flow through to the payment gateway of choice as well. So what about uh, developer programs? You need to publish a broad developer program. How well are these platforms good at looking after a developer program and publishing great APIs to developers? 
again, all these platforms do a very good job of that. Obviously, a lot of it depends on your own um, product managers that you have, your developers in the business, and your technical writers as well. But certainly, these platforms have a, a great capability to be able to publish to broad developer programs, and that's what they're designed for. So you'd expect that out of the box. And what about the developer portal? So uh, we did see uh, at one of the talks, I think it was Swapnil actually speak, spoke yesterday about that secret source of successful APIs. And he mentioned how important API documentation is. And you know, if it's not there, it's not usable. So uh, you want to make sure that you have a, a developer portal that can uh, surface that documentation, that you can show a catalog to your API users as to how to use your APIs and what APIs exist. Now, the good thing is all these platforms have pretty good API portals. Some of them are more simple than others. Again, I think after reviewing these, I find that the Apogee one has probably a lot more comprehensive options because it has an integrated portal. It also has a very customizable portal through Drupal 8 modules, as well as being able to go through the APIs but they all do have developer portals and they all have a capability to be able to surface a good, clean and rich API documentation out there as well. So what about extensibility? So I know one of the questions that comes up is, look, I don't just need an API gateway, but on top of RESTful APIs, I want this solution, this software also to be able to do integration as well. So I need maybe system to system communication, automated workflows or non RESTful interfaces that do heavy translation. And so looking at a product that does both RESTful APIs and integration, uh, who in the top quadrant can do that? We've really got three core platforms there that are great at doing that, Axway, MuleSoft and Software AG. Now, IBM and Microsoft also do that as well, uh, but I didn't include those in this picture just because they were sort of separate products as part of their platform. But out of the box, I guess these three platforms here do that integration quite well. What about self-constructing new components? Uh, so which of these platforms uh, allow me to self-construct? Maybe you know, you as a company don't want to be able to or have the need, whether that's regulatory or security or what have you, to be able to self-construct new components. Which one of these or which of these platforms can allow you to construct new components? Again, I think here you're kind of limited to the one platform, which is Kong. Uh, they offer the ability to do Kong plugins where you can build uh, your own capabilities and plug those into Kong. Obviously, they need to be supported yourself. Okay, so let's have a look at some of the support questions now you might want to ask yourself and have a look at which of these platforms are most suitable from a support perspective. First off, let's have a look at strong community support. So these platforms are very configurable and quite complex. So I've found that having strong community support is important because of the different permutations these platforms can go through. So having that stack overflow type of community support is fundamentally important. And when you start looking at that, some are more extensive than others. And so we can see here uh, that there's probably three platforms that have a very rich ecosystem around community support in the tens of thousands. And then there's other platforms out there that have it in the, the thousands or, or the hundreds. And so that can also help sway you as well when you're looking at um, what kind of uh, support am I going to get for the platform that I choose. Uh, lastly, enterprise grade support options and documentation. I think most of these platforms that I've seen have extensive uh, documentation. Uh, they have extensive API documentation and articles and how to uh, videos and articles as well. Um, Microsoft, I have found, is a bit light on in that space, but obviously it's quite new. So you'll probably see that. Are getting richer and richer as the years go by, but certainly there seems to be an extensive amount of documentation for all of those platforms. So you might be asking yourself, hey, look, I'm still confused here. I need to make an API platform decision. Just tell me what to do already. I don't need all these questions and answers. So what is your path to be able to get to a good decision? What are the steps you need to take? 
So first off is you got to have your business supporting you. So if you don't have business support, it's like having an aeroplane without fuel and without wings. Uh, if you want your API program to take off, well, you need both of those things uh, as part of your program. So make sure you've got your business on board. Secondly, document your API strategy. So if you don't know what your end state is going to be, uh, how do you think you're going to be able to choose the right API platform to meet your needs? So have a look at what your current state is, have a look at what the end state is that you want to have, and then the steps that you need to take to how to get there. And that'll sort of set the requirements for you that you can turn into technical requirements to help you make that API platform choice. Uh, thirdly, phone a friend. Uh, there's nothing better than borrowing other people's experience. So have a talk to others in the industry that have built and managed or are managing API platforms. Get their thoughts on it. Would they choose the same platform today? What's important to think about? What would they do if they were in your position? So you can really get some great insight from that. Uh, lastly, I would say get some real world data. So run a proof of concept. Um, so this was interesting. Actually, we recently uh, ran a proof of concept for a client where they were baking off a few different platforms. And uh, they did this very cheaply by getting the platforms to vie against each other. And uh, I spent that uh, time over a few months very cheaply to really get hands on and test drive those platforms by uh, us building a platform, an API, and a backend, and seeing how that capability stacked up against those other platforms. So certainly doing a proof of concept if you've got time is a pretty quick way to be able to make a choice on an API platform. So look, I'll leave it there. I'll hand it back over to Alex. Thank you for your time and listening. And if you've got any questions, uh, please sing out now. That's awesome. Thanks, David. And I was itching at the bit to ask a, a many, many questions because um, I was as a, as a solutions engineer for Tipco for nearly 10 years and part of that journey and seeing, the, I guess, the coming together or the the, um, the the ecosystem sort of changing over that time. Certainly, um, we have a lot to talk about over Red Beer, but we'll have to leave that till next time because we're, we're out of time, right. unfortunately. But thank you so much for your time no today and for the talks. Fascinating stuff. Thanks, Alex, and thanks, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your day.